Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 advanced tutorial. In this tutorial we will be taking a look at colour correction inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now what's great about Final Cut Pro 10 is that you can actually perform really great secondary colour corrections inside of your editor. Now if you're new to the professional video editing world and you're wondering what secondaries are, now basically it's the means of adjusting specific areas or ranges of your image as opposed to just editing the color of the overall image. For instance, crushing the blacks overall, that's, that's an actual term, basically here you can see I've got a color correction and I've got some adjustments and basically these adjustments are being applied to the whole image. You can see if I change these it's actually making a difference to the whole image, whereas with these other color corrections, you can see through means of masks and um, and color ranges, then you can actually alter specific parts of your image for a much nicer, well, to give you more control, basically. If we turn off my color corrections here, you can see this is the original image, and this is the color corrected one. You can see that not only have we obviously increased the contrast in the shot, but we've actually intensified just the blues of the skies, we've taken a bit of green out of the shot, um, we've added a bit more life into our character's face, and stuff like that is just not possible without the power of secondary colour corrections, simply because we want to we want to specify which areas we are affecting. And we'll get started with a new clip. So we've got our new clip in here, and if we turn on skimming, you can press S to turn on skimming. Um, you can quickly see we've got a nice shot, we've got some nice green, but the sky's looking really bland. And if we want to create a real nice Hollywood effect, or when I say Hollywood effect, I mean a nice intense cinematic feel, we really can't be having this very washed out sky. Um, so that's going to be one of the focuses. The other focus is we think the grass is maybe too green, and obviously his face is missing a bit of life. So, first of all, if we just go into a window and press Show Video Scopes, this is actually just going to allow us to see a bit more how we're manipulating the colour. You can see as we scrub over here, we get a live histogram, and basically this represents the levels of each colour at different gammas. Um, now what that means is, let's say, um, the higher, the higher the the closer to 100 the brighter the pixels and the closer to the zero the dark well when it's at zero it's actually dark that is black pure zero is black and it's telling us how much blue we've got in the white area like towards the bright light so let's go into our clip and pre click on the inspector icon so we can see our inspector and we by default you have a color correction but nothing is happening to it the first thing we want to do is actually select a range now First of all, we're going to work with the sky. So if we click this Add Color Mask and just click and drag on the sky, you can see we're starting to create a selection. Now, basically, everything that's bright is part of the selection, and everything that's not bright is not part of the selection. However, if we just let go here because we're getting a nice border, you can see that if we actually start to add some color corrections, let's say we just boosted the saturation or the exposure, you can see that this bit is getting left behind and that's because it's not part of the range. What you're actually better off doing is if we do the selection again, we select more than we want. So the cloud is actually incorporated. You can see this time the cloud is not left behind. If we go over here this time. You can see we're starting to get a bit of his face. We can actually add a shape mask as well and move these up and this will limit us to where the shape mask is, but within the borders of the color mask. Now this is really important. It means we can select a range that perhaps may affect some of the lower region of the image, but we're actually only going to affect the upper region because we've added a mask as well. Now this outer border is the feathering. If we set it really slim, it would give you a harsh edge to your color correction. So you actually want to expand it out, and you can see over in this corner here, as we feather it, we're getting a nice smooth blending as opposed to a harsh edge like that. But this isn't the colour correction we want, obviously. We're going to bring down some of the bright lights. I'm going to have a few. And 
We're also going to increase the midtones a little, but we actually want to intensify the blacks, mainly because then we get a real nice depth to our sky. There we go. You can see now, really quickly, we're actually starting to create something a bit nicer. We just add some blue as well. Now, if you don't know how to use these tools, then be sure to check out my color correcting basic tutorial um, on my YouTube page, and that will get you up to basics on how I'm using these tools. With the masks, the way it works is you can drag each handle to mo modify the shape, and like I said, you grab the outer ring to modify the feathering. This handle allows you to rotate, the middle handle allows you to move, and this handle is a slider that allows you to go from a circle to a square and you can specify how much rounding you have that turns it from a square to a circle now in this case an actual more of a square shape would be most appropriate because we're dealing with almost like a square portion of the image let's go back to our color correcting now let's add another color correction and let's add another range add a color mask and this time we want to select the grass And we're also going to add another shape because we don't want his face to be in it. You can see that the face was also eager to get in on this color correction action. We're going to bring in the feathering because we don't want it to cover his face. Like that. And the other area that might we might want as well is you can see there's a little bit of grass down here. So let's just reduce the size. And also you can see the feathering adjusts accordingly to when you scale the image, which is quite nice. And then let's go into our color corrections and let's just reduce some of the saturation. I think because we're trying to create quite a bleak, dry, warm landscape, I think too much green may kill the image. So if we take the green out of the grass as opposed to the whole image, it gives us a bit more flexibility and control. And now the last uh, secondary color correction I want to add is one for his face. So if we go into the third one, zoom in here. You can hold down control and scroll by the way to zoom in and out of your monitor if you didn't know. Um, that's actually built into the Mac operating system. Oh. Now obviously it's starting to affect the building so like again we want to add another shape mask to limit that area just to the man. Now let's say our character moved. We can actually press here, add a keyframe, scroll earlier on in the sequence add another keyframe and move our mask and over time now you can see that our mask moves now why is this important basically if you've actually got a moving image you can see this is actually a very static shot maybe you've got a pan or maybe your actual characters moving you can track mats you can you can track these masks to your characters um, for realistic well mainly just to give you an accurate color grade each time and if we just go into this color correction, basically I want to give him a bit more saturation on his face and a bit more contrast. If we bring this in, like that. And now, really quickly, we're starting to create an image that we've got far more control over. We're adjusting the areas specific to what we want. And this is what we mean by secondary color corrections. We are adjusting specific ranges, specific areas of the image. And you can see now, our image is actually far more balanced. Last but not least, we actually want to add an overall color correction. Now, if we just add a color correction, we're not going to add any masks, any color ranges. We're just going to go into the correction and intensify some of the whites just to add a bit more contrast not too much because we don't want to blow the sky out which we spent a while correcting ourselves if we're darkening the blacks we might want to actually keep some of the greys in and the other thing is we want to add some white some yellow to the overall image just so we can get this warm feel that we were going for and you can see without the color correction to the grass you can see this is the color correction to the grass without that look look now how bright and green the grass looks but because we desaturated the grass first now we've brightened up the image without brightening up the grass which is fantastic it means we've now achieved the look we wanted to 
And if we play this clip back, you can see it actually wants to render. The orange bar indicates that. But we've got sufficient playback. We can see that our clip is actually looking far more nice and far more genuine. Now, one more other thing you actually might want to do is add a vignette. This is quite a really common film look. If we just drag this from our effects browser and um, just click this icon here if you can't see your effects browser and use the search bar down here you can see by default it's quite a bit dark you might want to decrease the dark and amount um, there you go now we've created a quite a nice uh, vignette uh, and it's really giving our image a nice load of style. Now that is how you use secondary color corrections inside of Final Cut Pro 10. You can see really handy, really quickly and efficiently we've got far more creative control over our image and we've got some fantastic results and we haven't had to send this clip to any third party application to get more control over the image. You can also adjust the softness by the way of the color masks. Um, the most common time you'd use this is for skin because often you get harsh edges on skin. We just increase the smoothing. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope this was useful. Now you know how to use the masks and color ranges to create secondary color corrections and accurately. And we've also used them to balance out the color range of our image inside of Final Cut Pro 10 without, without sending it to a third party application. Everything is inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So why don't you go ahead and buy it? Or not? Maybe you're just here to hate. Are you trolling? I don't like trolls.